So hello everybody, my name is Uncle Alia alongside with my friends Misha Amira, Sophie Alia and Siti Sara will be presenting on the minor characters from Animal Farm. So the minor characters that we have today will be Molly, Clover, the hens and the dogs. So right now I will be explaining about Molly. So Molly represents the bourgeois and those who were interested in the greater good of the revolution. They just cared about themselves and fled the country, like Molly. She is an allusion to the wealthy Russian middle class, and just like them, Molly is materialistic and shallow. So Molly is characterized by her love of ribbons, showing that she wants to be admired for her physical appearance. Molly craves the attention of human beings and loves being groomed and pampered. The ribbons show up when Molly is mentioned, show how she is concerned only with herself and uncaring about the troubles or concerns of other animals. She has a difficult time with her new life on Animal Farm, as she misses wearing ribbons in her mane and eating sugar cubes. So why is Molly's name never mentioned again in Animal Farm? She is a defector and from the politics of Animal Farm and is never mentioned again by the other animals, who find her abandonment of animalism and rebellion shameful. When Jones attempts to retake the farm, Molly is missing and the other animals are worried about her. But she is found in her stall hiding, scared by the gunshots. This is in chapter 4, page 28 and paragraph 4. It is soon discovered that Molly has a hidden stash of sugar lumps and ribbons and has been seen allowing the man from Foxwood to stroke her nose. She was later seen in town wearing a ribbon and eating sugar. This can be found in chapter 5, page 30, paragraph 6. In chapter 3, she would vanish for hours on end and then reappear at meal times or in the evening after work was over, as though nothing has happened. But she made such excellent excuses and prayed so affectionately, and that it was impossible not to believe in her good intentions. So that can be found on page 19, paragraph 1, line 3. So from my understanding, Molly could be the one who always runs away when a problem surfaces. The only thing she cares about is herself. We can relate to this character in real life. There are people who like to mind their own business until the extent where they wouldn't care about others. As long as they are happy with their own life, that's the only thing that matters. These kind of people definitely exist in our society and this behavior would often cause difficulty or problem to others. Molly is only a minor character because she is only present in the novel for three chapters. However, she holds some significance due to her representing a group of people who were only present for very little of the communist regime. Hi, I'm Misha and I will continue the presentation by presenting about Clover. So Clover can be described as a gentle, motherly and powerful cart horse. Being the most maternal of animals, she always takes care of others. She is also the one who cares for the ducklings who lost their mother during Old Major's meeting, which can be seen in chapter 1 where she kind of made a sort of wall around them and the ducklings nestled inside it. Next, she also supports the revolution. Clover's loyalty shines out in the story. She is loyal to the animals as well as to the revolution. She does her part to embrace animalism and make sure that the goals are recognized. She is able to sense the hypocrisy but unable to detect the changes to the seven commandments and buys everything that the pigs say instead of speaking out her own thoughts. When the pigs begin changing the seven commandments, Clover suspected that something was amiss. But since she is unable to read, she isn't sure. Frequently, Muriel the ship reads for her and she accepts the changes as if they have always been there. For instance, in chapter 6, where she remembers the violation of commandments when the pigs sleep in bed. Clover represents a female working class and peasants of the Soviet Union. Like them, she works hard and strongly believes in the revolution. But she lacks the knowledge to question the pigs because she cannot read. It is Clover's inability to question the status quo which forces her to live under the tyrannical rule of the pigs. That is all from me. Thank you. I am Sufi Alenatasha Bitti Sarto and I will continue the presentation with the hands. 
Alright, so the hands are unintelligent animals in this novel because they can't even remember or memorize the seven commandments and actually they are behind the rebellion because Napoleon took their eggs and sold them to humans mm, and uh, but somehow they got terrified of Napoleon because after that Napoleon asked them to surrender their eggs and of course their plan was unsuccessful yep all right next um the reason why they are minor characters are because first they only have been mentioned six times in this novel and also we know that they are an intelligent animals right so they cannot come come up with any ideas or opinions by themselves they need other animals to stand together and come up with opinions as one um, for example, in chapter 1, the three dogs and all the pigs come in first and settle right in front of the platform. The hens and pigeons perch in the windows and the rafters. The sheep and cows settle behind the pigs and boxer and clover and the cut houses lie down in the back. Uh, this is also the same uh, in other chapters. They will be together with other animals. They will never be alone because they know if they are alone, uh, nothing will ever work they don't even know what letters comes after a all right um the has also represents the peasant farmers um as we know peasant farmers also are minor characters in real life because whenever they want to speak about something whenever they want to complain about something their voices will never be heard by the high society um as a result, they will have difficulties. Uh, for example, they have they will have difficulties um, uh, in their incomes or necessities to cover up for their whole family. Um, this situation, uh, their situations are the same, like the hands, um, because the hands uh, don't have any incomes, and at the end, eventually they die because of starvation. This also happened in real life too so yeah uh, that's all that's all from me thank you very much hi i am siti sarah binti Mazambi, and today i will be explaining about the dogs in animal farm so there are two categories of dogs in the story which is uh, the jesse bubel and pincher category and the nine dogs i will be explaining about the jesse bubel and pincher category which consists of three dogs named Jesse, Bluebell, and Pincher. Jesse, Blue, Jesse and Bluebell are the mothers of the uh, the nine dogs that I will be explaining about later. And Pincher is the only male one in this category. And Jesse and Bluebell play uh, was a part of the Battle of the Windmill. So. Let's continue with the second category. This category is interesting because I'm about to explain about the nine dogs which are Napoleon's bodyguards. Uh, so these nine dogs, they, uh, they help Napoleon implant fear amongst the people and animals that are around the farm. So these, uh, these dogs, they are very deadly and gruesome but extremely uh, obedient uh, to Napoleon. Uh, when Napoleon told them to chase Snowball away from the farm, they immediately chased Snowball away. Uh, so this was actually a scene in chapter 5. At this, there was a terrible baying sound outside, and nine enormous dogs wearing brass studded collars came bounding into the barn. They dashed straight for Snowball who only sprang from his place just in time to escape from their snapping jaws. So that was a scene in chapter 5. Um, so who do the nine dogs, who do they actually represent? In real life, they actually represent the KGB. Um, the KGB, they allowed Stalin or in the story's case, Napoleon to stay in power. They implant fear into the animals and people. It's important to know that when Orwell was writing this, 
he had uh, the Nazi Germany who was uh, who had Hitler as their leader and the Soviet Union in his mind interesting right so that's all from me thank you I will be handing this presentation to the next presenter